Hi and welcome to this uh, module uh, in cloud integration, module one, where I'll, I'll introduce the platform and give you some idea about what the current state and what it can be used for. So why do you want to go with the cloud integration? As always, when you want to introduce new tools and concepts, there are some reasons for it. And one of the biggest is customers are moving from on-premise uh, development and applications to cloud deployments and the current state the PI is not really suitable for that uh, there are some limitations on it that means that it would be better to have a more flexible tool that allow you to do some of these uh, integrations um, it seems like all the different uh, competitors have a, a similar solution so it makes a lot of sense for customers to uh, for SAP also to be providing a, a customer or a cloud application that can handle these things. Um, SAP has bought a lot of different uh, applications like uh, Ariba, uh, Sales <laughs> Success Factors, uh, which is separate line of business applications compared to the. ERP systems, the S4, uh, my ERP, uh, uh, Hypers Marketing, that is kind of built in um, with this. Uh, if those applications need to be successful and if, if customers would go and say, okay, I want the DSP branded product instead of a competitor branded, it should be really easy for customers to integrate. And the CPI makes some of these integrations a lot easier because they can deliver pre-delivered content um, and that makes it uh, easier to get started with. It's uh, also a little cheaper to, to get started with. You can uh, buy a license for 600 euros a month for uh, as a customer. Um, compared to a CPI system where the, the price is, or a PI system where the price is a lot larger to begin with. The only challenge is at the moment we don't have a training system, but uh, check a look at some of the resources where I'll show some of the, the current ways to get access to a uh, training system. So the key benefits of it, it is if you're coming from a PI world, you would one of the things you'd see is it's a lot more flexible. Some of the things you can do there is, <laughs> well, in the PR world would require that you did BPMs or CC BPMs to handle some of these things. And with this, you can do a lot of different steps, call uh, a system, get a token back, call some other applications, based on that input, do uh, different business logic. So. It really, the, the complexity here is really crucial when you are doing, for instance, cloud integration, where you don't have the option of doing custom development, say, okay, now this is our interface we want to catch. It's just one application you want to uh, develop with. Uh, one of the things that have been, been really fun on is the, the process uh, direct adapter, which is an ad internal adapter, me meaning that you can call flows internally in your application without having to same way process uh, the data um, then yeah making it easier for for, in, for you to integrate at least some of the sap to sap applications it, it comes with a lot of pre-delivered content uh, where you can just say i want this uh, scenario and once you have that installed you can do you don't need to do any development on some scenarios, minor modification, just to, to work out how this works. And then there's uh, the pay-as-you-go model with some flexible pricing. You can say you just want an initial version. Once you're adding a, an extra integration, you would then have to pay for that extra integration. A lot of customers uh, on the CPI would also have uh, SAP PI or PO uh, in place. And there is some some overlap and some of the, the key resources you can use it. Um, but the main thing is that this is 
yeah, more focused on cloud development. Um, and most of SAP's effort at the moment is in, in the cloud uh, strategy and cloud products, making those faster and, and more reliable. Um, so one of the, the things that, that makes the, the CPI and the, the PO coexist is the ability to to take some of the, the cloud content that you have developed and deploy it on your local uh, PI system or PO system, uh, 7.5, uh, one of the latest SPs. You can take the, the, the cloud content, deploy it locally and run it there and then just reuse your SAP PI uh, licensing you you already have instead of using uh, connections in the CPI. So if we want to talk about the SAP Cloud Platform, it consists of a lot of different applications and has evolved over time. So it started out using the new platform, then uh, Cloud uh, Foundry was added, and least lately Kubernetes. Um, so no, currently, I think it's only possible to run the CPI on SAP data center, but they are expanding it quite a bit, so it should be able to, to run on uh, Amazon, uh, Google, and Asia within short period of time or within 2019. Um, and then there will also be other options, uh, private uh, deployment options and stuff like that, oh, private clouds. Uh, where you would be able to run the same platform in that environment. Um, so once you log into your, your dashboard, you can see uh, some of these, uh, these attributes that we have here. Um, so you have one account uh, for each of the different tenants that you have. Uh, so you'd have one tenant that you mark as or you get marked as the, the test or development tenant and one as the productive tenant. And then in each of them, you would have a description, one to the runtime engine, the, the IFL map, and the administration mode, that's the TMN. And we would also see this when we're configuring the users that it's two different applications that are accessing this. And this is also what you would see sometime when they're sending out service notification that one of these tenants is not working as, as expected for some reason, but the other one is, is working fine. So the runtime working is working fine. And there's some internal uh, communication between these two things that allow you um, the system to exchange data uh, and enable you to, to run even though you cannot do any development. Uh, for those rare occasions where it, it occurs. Um, but it is relevant to understand that there's two different tenants or uh, applications running to, to make one cloud platform integration. And then if you have multiple different uh, scenarios, you would also be able to see that you have different accounts, one for each of the different uh, uh, tenants that you have and you can put in uh, the information there. And in many cases, you would have many CPI uh, tenants at clouds uh, because it's, yeah, the way it has been delivered, licensing and stuff like that. So that means you would have to figure out which of them makes most sense or where you can do your development. And it's not always easy to understand what's, what makes sense. Um, so before you get started, you need to get your users and give them access to the, the system. And the way that you do that is you log into the, the CPI uh, platform and then you assign the ESB messaging sent. This is coming from, um, from the runtime. Uh, Indian West, the other one is coming from the, the the UI administration engine, but these th three roles should be uh, should enable you to to give give you access to to run all the scenarios that you want, and obviously when you're doing deployment to to real um, 
you probably want to limit some of these uh, access to to the developers there's a good guide on on what are the different roles you need um, to, for each of them to to really be uh, be useful um, but in here you can create groups and assign users to those groups so it's a little easier to just uh, find the ones you want to change or have a developer role uh, administrator a business role and then administrator th those uh, those roles um, and you're using the the s user or the p users so i've seen scenarios where you wanted um, a service user and in those cases they just used created a new p users but i guess it's the same thing if you're just creating it as s user it's probably better because then you you from the administrative cockpit can see all the different users you have created and and uh, assign them i guess the only thing that that would make sense or the only uh, thing reason not to do it would be that uh, if you're paying licensing per s user you're creating but in most cases i haven't seen that so we did talk a little about the pre-delivered content and i do i have a larger module on on this later but once you log into the normal administrative mode, this is uh, the UI you'd be met with. And in here, you can actually see a lot of the different scenarios that SAP has provided that you can just say, okay, I, I do like the, the Twitter integration, uh, sub magazine cloud, Twitter integration, click on this one, add it to your tenant, and then you can start developing based on that. We got a uh, design time. Uh, so this is here you got all the different objects that you are developing on um, in your scenarios so we have some some pre-delivered content that's being upgradable some objects that I've created where I'm adding a lot of the, the scenarios that we have um, and then you can drill in go in and find an iFlow and here you are developing it all in the web UI um, so this is where you have all the development. In some other courses, you may see that they are also using the Eclipse. Um, there was a Eclipse, or there is an Eclipse plugin that allowed you to do a lot of the development administration, but that part has been kind of deprecated because they want you to use um, a component or the web UI is the, the one place that you want to do because it's a lot easier to, to maintain and ensure that you have deployed the right uh, content for developing uh, these things in. Um, so the only thing you are going to need uh, the Eclipse plugin to is if you want to do any development of adapter or components, uh, then you need to use it uh, to upload those and compile them into uh, separate uh, entities. Um, so you can so developing adapter and components you can take some camel um, parts deploy it or do some magic around it uh, some scripts and deploy it and then you can run your own HTTP adapter if you want to make something like that but it's a little tricky once you get to some libraries or some applications that have a lot of libraries then we got the administrative mode or admin panel where you can see how many messages has been processed, what are the errors, how many iFlows do you have, and if you have any uh, keywords and, and security uh, artifacts, they also in this just one place. Um, in one of the original versions, if you wanted to add a new certificate, you needed to cr create an OSS and then SAP would add that certificate to, to the key store. Now you get self-service and you can do it on all the different tenants. There's also a part here where you got the uh, option to do settings. Here you can set up uh, connections to uh, the ES repository. If you have that on premise, um, then you can use the cloud connector to connect to it and, and download mappings, operation mappings, and deploy them here. Uh, there's also transport settings, and I think that's one of the things that's also being 
uh, updated. Um, so right now it seems like you got uh, you can deploy to CTS Plus or use CTS Plus for transport, or there's also a cloud uh, transport uh, option. And then for transport, you also have uh, file import export. Um, one thing that's really useful if you don't have it already, there's an SS uh, sub passport, which is like an SSL uh, certificate or uh, yeah, so it's a certificate that enable you to do one click uh, sign on. And this is really useful whenever you are logging in because then you just get a pop up saying, is this the user you want to log in with? Yes. And then uh, you would log in with that user. Uh, just go to this URL, uh, click on uh, yeah, download certificate, deploy it in your uh, key store, and then you can uh, use it from, from all uh, all your different browsers when you're accessing the CPI. 